In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can do retrieval augmented generation as an example of the sort of tooling or the sort of capabilities that we can build out within Nemo guardrails. So typically what we would do when building out a, a RAG pipeline for LLMs is we'd actually take two possible approaches. Both approaches are going to kind of use the similar components. So let me just draw those out very quickly. We're going to have a vector database. Okay, we're going to be using Pinecone. We're going to have an embedding model. We're going to be using a text. We're going to be using Arda002 for that. So that's your embedding model. And well, basically we would have taken some documents from you know, somewhere and we would have fed them in through our embedding model and stored those within Pinecone already, okay? Now, the two approaches to RAG that we can do with LMs or the two traditional approaches is we can take a naive approach. So naive approach is that we have, we have an LLM, okay, up here. Um, let me just do it here. We have an LLM and let's say we have a query, okay? We take our query and what we do is we actually take that straight to the embedding model here, okay? That creates our query vector, xq, which goes into Pinecone and returns a set of documents or contexts which are like relevant information, okay, for that particular query. Now what we do is we bring that over here and we're going to merge it with our query, okay? So now we have the query plus the context and we feed them into the LLM. It doesn't matter what our query was in this instance. Our query could have just been, hi, how are you, right? And we actually went to Pinecone or we went and embedded that to went to Pinecone and retrieved some context. That's why I call this the naive approach. Um, the pros of this is that it's very quick, right? It, to, to embed and search through Pinecone, it's, it's like incredibly fast. So you're not waiting long particularly when we compare that to the other approach. So the other approach is slower, more complex, but you know, potentially more powerful, right? So that is where you have like an agent, which is essentially like a big wrapper around your LLM that allows it to have multiple thoughts over time, like, inter like an internal dialogue. So when you send your, your query, I'm gonna just put a query over here this time, it goes over to your agent and then it's getting processed within that agent for a while right another thing that the agent can do is it has access to external tools right one of those tools may be like a retrieval tool so the agent is going to say okay your query um, if it's hi how are you i don't need to do anything i'm just going to respond directly right i'm just going to respond directly to you you know i'm doing okay actually i'm not doing okay because i don't have feelings because i am ai Right, it's going to say something like that. Um, but if we do ask it something that requires some external knowledge, what it can do is it's going to refer to its like external knowledge tool over here. And that external knowledge tool is going to point that query or a modified version of that query to our embedding model. That is going to create XQ again, which then gets sent to Pinecone and it gets some context, okay? They get passed back into like our tool pipeline and processed internally by our agent again, which will output an answer, okay? Based on those contexts in our original query. Now, I mean, you can see straight away that this process is, it's heavier, right? Because before we even get to this retrieval tool, the LLM needs to have generated the fact that it needs to use that tool. And LLM generations are basically always going to be the slow part of the process, um, at least for, for now. So before we even get to that tool, we have one LLM generation, right? And then we go through um, and we, come down to here, we feed those contexts back into our agent, and then we have at least another LLM generation. And actually, if you use like the out of the box approaches from Langchain, I think at minimum, you're going to be doing uh, three LLM 
generations because it also has like a summarization step in there as well. So basically you're going to be waiting a while, but you'll probably get a good result. Now, what God Rose does is kind of cool because it allows us to not do either of those approaches, but instead do something that's kind of in the middle. So I mean, this is looking kind of messy already, but let me let me try. Okay, so we have our query. That query is actually going to go directly to guardrails. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm gonna call it G over here. Right, so that's gonna go directly to guardrails. Guardrails is going to actually use an embedding model, uh, a different embedding model, but still an embedding model. So let me just put E for embedding. Right, it's gonna take your query and create, create a not a query, well, it is kind of like query vector, but it's not using it as a query vector, right? And let's just, we'll call it V for vector at the moment. What that's going to do is it's going to look at the guardrails that have been set, right? So you know, we have those definitions of user asks about politics or define user asks about large language models. And it's going to look at whether that query has a high similarity to any of those things. What we might want to do is if the user is asking about language models, we want to actually trigger the retrieval tool, okay? Like our own retrieval tool. So we're gonna say, okay, is that semantically similar? And we, based on that semantic similarity, we decide on a tool or we decide to just generate a response. So we've now kind of done what the agent was doing, but when, not doing that first LM generation, which is makes things a lot faster, right? So now, okay, we've decided, yes, we do want to send our vector or our query over to Pinecone, right? Um, so actually what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to take that um, query and we're gonna have to bring it over to our embedding model here because they're different embedding models. So. We have our embedding model, and then we have our query vector that goes into Pinecone. From that, we get our context. And here is where those contexts would actually go into our LLM. Now, how do I do this? I've made a bit of a mess. Basically, we want to put those two together, our query and the context, and we're gonna feed them over into our LLM. Okay, here. And then that's going to return our answer to us. Okay, so it's gonna come over here. So we have one LLM call there. And that is, that's all we really need. Uh, depending on the tool, we may actually need to decide to actually use an LLM call beforehand. But yeah, it kind of depends. And it means that for those queries where we didn't need an LLM call, like if we're saying, hi, how are you? we won't generate two, we'll just generate one. So that's where guardrails comes into this whole sort of retrieve augmented generation thing and the sort of unique approach that it takes um, to this, which is significantly faster than the agent approach while still allowing us to use tools, which is pretty cool. Naturally, just as with a normal agent, we're not restricted to just using one tool, we can obviously use many tools. So that's, I think, pretty cool. Now, let's take a look at how we would actually implement this, okay? So there's this notebook. Again, as usual, there'll be a link to this at the top of the video. We're going to just install a few libraries. So Nemo guardrails, Pinecone for the vector index. We have data, this is Hugging Face data sets, which where we're just going to download some data from that we're going to be querying against and OpenAI to create the embeddings and also for the LLM calls. So uh, yeah, let's come down to here. Now there's this whole like indexing process with vector databases. I'm going to be very quick going through this because I've spoken about it like a million times. So I don't want to uh, repeat myself every time. We're just going to start with this data set. It's from Hugging Face. It's a data set I created. It's basically just a load of papers that are either the Llama 2 paper or related to the Llama 2 paper that is scraped from archive. Okay, and it contains all this information. We don't need all of that, okay? Uh, what I want to do is I'm just going to 
uh, create some unique IDs. And after I've created those unique IDs, I don't want any of those other irrelevant fields because there's quite a few in there. So we just want to keep the unique ID, the chunk, the title, and the source. Okay, now what we want to do is embed that data. There's not too much in there, by the way, just under 5,000 uh, records. So what we need to do is embed that. For that, we need an OpenAI API key. Uh, you know, 5,000 embeddings with R002. It doesn't cost much money, by the way. It's pretty cheap. But you just need to enter your API key in here. Okay, I will run that. And now we can go ahead and create some embeddings. So text embedding R002. Uh, this is how we're going to create those embeddings. That response will give us uh, this object data model usage. We want to go into data and we've seen data. We have two records. Each one of those records is one of our embeddings, which every embedding from the R002 model is 1,536 dimensions. All right. Now what we need to do is initialize our vector index. We need an API key and a environment variable for that from Pinecone. This is all free. so we head on over to app.pinecone.io and you should see something kind of like this. Uh, so you'll be like your name, default projects. Um, you go to API keys and you just want to copy your API key. And also just remember your environment here. Your API key you just need to put into here. And the environment for me was US West 1 GCP. Yours will probably be different. And once you've entered both those, you just run that. And this is just checking that we have connected successfully. I'm going to create a new index. It's going to be called Nemo Guardrails Rag with Actions. You can call it whatever you want. It's okay. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to create the index if it doesn't already exist. Now, obviously, if it's your first time working through this, the index shouldn't already exist. So it will create a new one. Uh, we use a cosine similarity metric that is just recommended for R002. And we need to specify the dimensionality of the vectors we'll be storing within our index which is the 1,536 that we saw earlier. Now we're just gonna wait for that index to be fully initialized before we connect to the index. Let's run that. Uh, this will take, it's usually like around a minute to initialize an index. So I'll just I'll skip forward a little bit. Okay, and we see that our index is currently empty as, as expected because we just created it. Okay, and then we, add everything into our index. We're embedding things and just kind of putting everything up there in chunks of like 100, okay? That again, is gonna take about a minute to run. Okay, once that has finished, we can move on to actually creating our um, RAG pipelines with guardrails. So with guardrails, what we, we're gonna be doing here is using guardrail actions, which are basically executable functions from within guardrails like colang file uh, if you saw the previous video you, you will know about these so we need to initialize one of those functions which is going to be the retrieve function okay and we need to make sure that's an async function because when we are using uh, functions with async generate within guardrails they need to be asynchronous functions otherwise we're going to get an error so we're just going to embed our query to create our query vector. And then we're going to uh, retrieve relevant items from Pinecone and we're just going to return those. Okay. Then we follow that up with another function. Okay. I'm just going to print rag code so we know when this is actually being called later on. And this is going to take our query and the context that we retrieved from our retrieve function. And it's going to put them into this kind of like prompt template, uh, which is saying, okay, you're a helpful assistant, blows a query from user in some relevant context, answer the question, giving those contexts. Okay, that's what we're doing here. And then we're passing that back to OpenAI to generate a response. We're gonna call all of this from within guardrails, given a particular criteria. Okay, so we set up the initial, like the, the typical config for guardrails, we're not really going to be using text DaVinci here, at least not for the rag component. So actually here, I will remove that. I'm a, no, let's say I'm a simple assistant. I don't like to talk of politics. 
Um, so this is going to be our rail against talking about politics. Right? We don't we don't want to do that. Okay, we see that here. We've seen this before. Then what we want to do is define. Okay, the user is asking about Llama or I think LLMs in general. Right, uh, um, we can change that to LLM. Right, user ask LLM and define flow LLM. Okay, now basically what this is doing here is it's creating a set of semantically embedded vectors. And what Godrail is going to do is take our user's query and compare it against these. And if it sees that they are very similar, it's going to say, okay, the user is asking about LLMs and that will trigger this flow here, right? And then in this flow, we perform retrieve augmented generation. So we get our context, given the user's last message, and then we um, create a retrieval augmented answer based on those and then we just tell the bot to return that directly because it's this answer has been generated by our llm so it doesn't need to generate a new answer based on that answer okay okay let's uh, let's run that now yeah one other thing we need to do here is we need to register actions okay so we have this execute retrieve, execute rag, that's great, but uh, guardrails doesn't know which Python functions we're talking about here. So we need to register them. So here we just initialize our rails and then here we register those. So you can see we're passing in that function and we're specifying the name that that function has within the curling file. So this could be different. This could be like, um, I don't know, get, like instead of retrieve. And that means that in our coline, rather than calling execute retrieve, we would be calling execute get, okay? But I'm just gonna keep it as retrieve because I think that's easier to easier for us to read. So we register those actions. And now what we can do is try out our rag agent built with guardrails or rag pipeline via guardrails. Okay, so we saw um, simple prompt. We're not asking it to, we're not asking anything about LLMs here. So it shouldn't use the the rag pipeline and it doesn't. Now let's ask you about Llama 2. We should see that it will uh, call. Okay, here you can see rag called. That means it used a pipeline. And we can see that it gives us this answer. Llama 2 is a collection of pre-trained and fine-tuned large language models, so on and so on. That's pretty cool. It's a good answer. It tells us everything. But I think maybe something that I would like to know here is how does that compare? We're using RAG here. What if we just don't use RAG? What if we just use guardrails directly without our RAG pipeline? Let's try. All right, so we're going to do this one. Uh, this is a no RAG colang file. Okay, so it just defines the politics flow. It doesn't mention anything about the Llama stuff. Let's run that. Okay, so that is our no rag rails. And let's ask the same question. Tell me about Llama 2. Okay, so it just says, sorry, I don't know anything about Llama 2. Can you provide a bit more information so I can help you better? That's actually a better answer than what I got last time, which was telling me, I think it was telling me about the actual animals, the, the llamas. Uh, let's try another one. So this is again without rag. There's this thing called red teaming that Llama 2 did. Basically, it's like stress testing the model. Um, so let's ask about that. And it's like, okay, I don't know the answer to that. Maybe we could try searching the internet for more information on the topic. Interesting that I'm getting different responses now, but still kind of shows the point. Now let's try this with RAG. Okay, let's run that. And here we go. So what is red teaming? Red teaming is used to identify risks and to measure the robustness of the model with respect to a red teaming exercise executed by a set of experts. It's also used to provide qualitative insights to recognize and target specific patterns in a more comprehensive way. That is what red teaming uh, was used for within the sort of training process. Now, let's try our rag rails. And I'm just going to ask you, okay, what color is the sky? So it probably doesn't need, this is a question, but it shouldn't need to use a rag here. And it doesn't, you know, the sky is usually blue and so on and so on, right? So we can see that it is deciding when it needs to use rag and it's not using rag when it shouldn't, which is 
exactly what we wanted it to do. That I think is a very good use case for where we can use guardrails. It gives us the ability to basically create almost like an agent like tool that can use retrieval tools or other um, tools like a agent would, but without that slow initial LLM call. And that means that when we are using tools that just need to be kind of triggered rather than need parameters, this approach is actually faster. So that's it for this video. I hope this is kind of like an interesting approach or technique that we can use guardrails for. And as I said, we can use this with a lot of other tools as well, which is really cool. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope all this has been useful and interesting. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in the next one.